Hello everyone, welcome to the final Shmup Stravaganza video. I pity the fool that didn't enjoy the Shmup Stravaganza series. But we're moving on to A Team for the Atari 2600. A prototype that was never released. We'll try this game out for a moment here and see what it's all about. And I am a big fan of Mr. T. I absolutely love his appearances in the original classic show. Different Strokes, and any of you who grew up in the 1970s and 80s would definitely remember that show. But here I'm playing as the disembodied head of Mr. T, a.k.a. B.A. Brock. And like any Atari 2600 game, a lot of the fun factor comes in passing the controller to someone else and seeing if they can beat your high score. And I'll play one other game that is great to try to compete in. And of course, if you play any two-player game simultaneously, such as Target Fun, Combat, and so on, it's even more fun because you can compete at the same time rather than taking turns. But here we're going to try out Tron Deadly Disc, also for the 2600. And I am running these both with the Stella Core. And if you like games such as Berserk, you'll like this game. As you get hit by the enemy projectiles, your color will change, and you can hit usually about five times before you're deceased in your virtual ward, should I say. Starts out nice and easy, but gets much, much more difficult as time goes on. Here I got hit one time. Just as fun as I remember it. Again, if you like games like Berserk, you'll definitely like this game. And see what kind of high score you get in this. And let me know and I'll try to beat it. But we're going to move on to yet another Tron game. Tron Arcade. Here we're going to play the arcade version of Tron, which had an incredibly awesome... Arcade cabinet when I saw this back in the pool in LA way, way back. It had a great joystick as well. Really, really clever design, beautiful cabinet. And this game is running via MAME 2003 Extreme right now. And it is one of the games that you have to reconfigure the control so that you can have the rotary controls properly accounted for. If you run this via MAME 2010, or 2014, you do not have to worry about this issue. But if you run it on main 2000 or main 2003, you're going to need to reconfigure the controls. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. Like Akari Warriors in a Guerrilla War, you have rotary controls where you need to use... I'll show you what I mean. If you go into the main options here... Input this game, right here where it says dial, I programmed dial 1 to the L button and dial 2 to the R button and this gives me the ability to rotate, rotate do tank style rotary controls there. So I can push the R button on my controller now and I can rotate it, nice and easy. There we go. And again, you don't have to worry about this on MAME 2010 or 14, but on MAME 2000 and MAME 2003, you do. The life cycles never get old. Well, got that in the bag. Tron's a fantastic game. Just remember to remap the rotary controls. Again, you'll have to do that for games such as Akari Warriors and Guerrilla War, which had the controller where it was rotary in the arcade. And Zybots is another game like that as well. Just reprogram the dial controls. Here we're going to try a 32X game called Dark Side. And many of the uh, 32X games that you look for on eBay are not incredibly expensive, but this one is pretty darn expensive. But we're going to check it out here. It is one of the obscure and rarer of the 32X catalog games. 
if I remember this from when I played it a while back, it is a little bit like Galaxy Force. We're gonna check it out and see. See if I remember correctly. 1995. Yet another one of several failed add-ons and systems for Sega, but I love each and everything that Sega has ever released. I'm very, very supportive of the company. And I just got the Genesis collection that was released on PS4. Even though I got it on my PSP as well as on my PS3 before. But there are a few differences this time around. You have a mirror mode and a rewind mode, which is really cool. Feels like I'm playing 3D Asteroids right now with a little bit of a Galaxy Force appeal to it. The soundtrack is definitely not too bad. I'm digging the soundtrack to this. Sounds like it's done on a the theremin, actually. <laughs> but being that I'm a fan of Galaxy Force, I'm definitely going to come back and check this game out a little bit more. But speaking of another game that is a little bit of a 3D shmup game, I'm going to load another super graphics title. We'll check that out for a moment. This is for the super graphics. I probably could have gone the other way in reverse and got to it a little bit faster. No harm, no foul here. Super Graphics, a game called Battleways. There are quite a few games like this out there. I mean, obviously you have your Top Gun and Afterburner, but this game has a little bit of a different appeal to it. It has a little bit of a gimmick where you're fighting against aliens and such, so it definitely stands out. <laughs> But this is Battle Ways for the Super Graphics. Really, really cool soundtrack. And you're not fighting your normal everyday enemies. You're fighting monsters and, and insects and all kinds of goofy stuff. And you can hold down the button and target just like an afterburner. Definitely a cool game. I'm running it via the Mednafen Super Graphics Core right now. But yeah, there are not that many games on the Super Graphics. I mean, it is an add-on to the original Turbo Graphics system. But all of the games are incredibly awesome to check out. So I definitely check out the five or six games that are even on the system. I believe there's six all together. Move, move on to another arcade game called Gorf. And if you're playing games such as Space Invaders, Galaxian, or Galaga, where you have the static screens that pretty much never really change, you're going to love a game such as Gorf, where you move on to varied levels. You do not just do one repeated level. It actually moves on to different style levels. And this is also one of the games that are required to have samples. Otherwise, you'll be missing part of the sound to the game. And you'll know what I mean when I start the game here. You'll hear the samples in motion and in action. And there's a, an H mod in my core set called the Samples H mod. You simply copy the samples directly into the corresponding main 2003 samples folder, then install it like any other H mod or core, and you'll hear the samples show you right now. Speaking spell! It starts out like your typical Space Invaders, but if I'm able to get past this first stage, we'll see a different stage. Let's see if I can handle this. And this was a great game on Atari 2600 as well. I love that version as well. And there is a definite difference in difficulty between the two versions. Okay, I made it to stage two here. And you can see it's definitely different than stage one. 
really, really cool. But check it out for yourself and you'll see the varied stages there. Really, really cool. I'm going to play uh, two other games that also require samples and have varied stages rather than just simple one stage static levels. All three of them require samples. You can play them without the samples, but you'll be missing sound effects and or music if you do it that way. We're going to load Buck Rogers, Planet of Zoom. Also one of my favorite childhood TV series, and it was actually released in the theater as a motion picture at one point. But many, many years ago, I wanted a Commodore 64. I ended up getting an Atom computer instead, and one of the games I got on cassette tape for the Atom computer was this game, Buck Rogers, which is very, very close approximation to the arcade version. I mean, I played the hell out of it, along with Dragons there, which was also on cassette tape. The one thing I loved about the Atom computer was that it had the ability to have an add-on for the ColecoVision, so I was able to play Atari 2600, as well as ColecoVision games on it, so I definitely was happy with the system, regardless of it being a flop, and me not getting my Commodore 64. Right now, you do not hear any sound at all, but if you install the samples and start the game, you'll hear this. The true sound effects you should be getting. Always been one of my favorite games on the Atom computer and arcade. And it's not just one level. You move on to various stages as you'll see in a moment here. There we go. So you have a few stages that you move on to. Really, really cool. Check it out, Buck Rogers. We're going to do one more game that requires samples to run. And I have done a samples video which you could look up. This one's called Phoenix. And ironically, there was a, a late 1970s, early 1980s show called Phoenix about an alien from outer space. And in one episode, he's in an arcade playing this specific game, Phoenix. Like other shows at the time, Manimal and Out of Man, they didn't have too many episodes, but they became cult classics. I still love watching Manimal and Out of Man every once in a while to this day. But Phoenix is definitely a cult classic and not really well known, but still fun to dig up and watch. And you can see episodes of it on YouTube, I believe. Let's see if we can make it to the second stage. This is a pretty difficult game. Failure number one. And I never edit my videos. If I'm going to suck at a game, you're going to see me suck at a game. If any of you also grew up in the late 80s, you remember the show called Max Had Your Room, and one of the reasons I never edit my videos is because of the nervous tics that Max Had Your Room would have look very, very similar to the nervous tics that someone would have if they edit their video 500 to 1,000 times. Your head just jerks uncontrollably, and it gets ridiculous. Here we go, we have a little bit of a different stage here. Really, really cool. So it's definitely a cool novelty, seeing a little bit of a gimmick where you move on to different stages rather than having one singular static screen such as in Galaga, Pac-Man, and so on. You move on to different levels. Well, obviously the level design changes in Pac-Man, so not quite the best example. Here we're going to move on to R-Type Leo, and I cannot go wrong with any Iron game. Each and every Iron game that I've ever played has been fantastic. I absolutely double dare you, yet another Nickelodeon show I used to watch many years ago, and Nick Arcade, of course, but definitely, definitely see if you can figure out any Iron game that has ever been made that is not good. I highly doubt you can. I think each and every Iron game is a masterpiece. Try finding one that isn't. I dare you. But we're checking out the incredible R-Type Leo. This is one of many games that had distorted sound issues due to the encryption, but in MAME 2003 Extreme, the sound is absolutely fine. I did do a previous Iron video where I showed a vast majority 
of the arcade catalog of Irem, so definitely check that out as well. But we're going to go into the game history here and see if we can get a little quick list of some of the R-Type games in the impeccable R-Type series made by Irem. And I'd love to see what the people from this company are up to nowadays. I know some of them went on to make the incredible In the Hunt. And of course, Metal Slug series. Here we have R-Type, R-Type 2, R-Type Rio, R-Type 3, R-Type Delta, R-Type Final, and R-Type Tactics. And of course, R-Type Tactics is not a normal shmup game. It is actually a tactical strategy game. So we're going to check out uh, this game for a moment here before we move on to some more games. Very, very cool game. Digging it. It's a great soundtrack to prove. You really cannot go wrong with any Iron game though. I mean, everything they make is pure gold. How many companies can you name that have a perfect track record? I mean, I'm trying to think of another company that has an absolutely perfect track record with games. I mean, I love Konami, I love Capcom, I love Square. I love Sunsoft, I mean, but almost every company has at least one bad game. I'm trying to think of a single game made by Iram that is not good. There's probably one, but maybe one of you guys and gals will figure it out before I do. We're going to try one other great game made by Iram here called Dragon Breed. This is a truly difficult game, but it has a great gimmick where you ride a dragon. So when you were playing Strider and taking on the Dragon Boss, now we're doing it the opposite way. Now you're riding the Dragon throughout the game. Different company, of course. But if any of you know what any of the key development team members of the original Irem company are up to nowadays, what companies they're working for, definitely let me know. Well, here we're checking out Dragon Breed, made by Irem. Great soundtrack, great music, great sound effects, everything's going for this game here. Now I can't wait to see the next season of Game of Thrones. Anytime you see dragons, you think of the original Excalibur, as well as, of course, the Game of Thrones series. And, of course, Sean Connery. But, yes, you can use the dragon to attack enemies as well, which is really, really cool. But I didn't do it in the best way there. I'll try it one more time, see if I can get past that little bit of a failure there. Wrap around the enemies and take them out with your dragon. Really, really cool. So kind of an interesting play on the orb that you have in our type. Very, very cool game. Dragon Breed is an amazing game. We have time for a few more games before we close up shop here. You may remember in my part 9, where I was playing a specific DS game called Ketsui Death Label, we're going to be playing the arcade version of it right now. Right here, Ketsui Kazuna Jigoku Tachi. I am running this via Final Burn Alpha 2012 using a PGM BIOS, which I copied directly into the same CLV folder that the game is installed upon. But this is an exceptional cave shooter, one of many, a couple dozen plus that they've made, and definitely check this out. Again, I had run it via Final Burn Alpha 2012. But if you love your cave shmups, you'll absolutely love this game. Here we go. Let's get into the fray of the action here. Ready? 
much nicer playing in a faster frame rate than in the DS video that I played in part 9. <laughs> Running fantastic. And this will run on Final Burn Alpha 2012 as well as Final Burn Alpha 2016. And I'm trying to think here, what do you think the very, very first example of a bullet house shooter ever made would be? And what company made it? Let's see what you guys and gals think. This is definitely a bit of a bullet house shooter for sure. But we're playing Ketsui the arcade version on Final Burn Alpha 2012. Definitely check it out. Incredible game. Let's see what else we have to play for the tail end of this video. Have time for just a few more. And this will be the final Shmup Stravaganza video. Not that I won't come back to Shmups in the future. I'm just going to be moving on to a race Stravaganza series next. What else do we have to play here? See, I'm running out of ideas for the Shmup Stravaganza series. It's about time we call it quits. There we go, we got uh, Smash TV. There are only so many Shmup Stravaganza videos we do before I run out of ideas and or run into doing the same games again. Yes, if I end up doing a part 11, 12, or 13, I'd more than likely do a game that I've already covered in the first 10 parts, which would be a little bit embarrassment and then a true fail. But I'm going to show you something really cool. When you talk about how games basically are derivative of previous games, this game here is a perfect derivative of a classic arcade game. And let's see if you know which one I'm thinking of. Like I showed you in my previous video where I was doing... Games that were earlier similar to Cobra Triangle as well as Robotron. I'm going to show you other games that are derivative. And uh, we're going to start out with Smash TV here. Bingo! Let's go! And I absolutely love twin stick shooters. They never ever get old. to see you guys and gals try to get as far as you possibly can in this game without dying. See how far you can make it. Bingo! This very, very much reminds me of the movie Running Man, which is an old Stephen King movie. Basically, uh, the original book was written by Richard Bachman. It's a pseudonym for Stephen King, but he went on and, and the movie was turned into The Running Man. And if you've seen the recent Rob Zombie movie, it's also very, very similar to Running Man, but I love the corniness factor of both of them. And there's some good interest in violence in both of them. But speaking of Smash TV, you go back uh, several years earlier, even before Robotron, yes, Space Dungeon. Yes, this game came out before Robotron. It is very, very similar to Robotron. And one thing that's really, really cool about this game is if you play it with a sound system, you're going to get some really, really interesting bass drop style sound effects. In the game called Atlantis, which I showed in one of my earliest Shmup Stravaganza videos, when the little fast spaceships come on the screen and you take them out, you get a nifty, big, mind-blowing bass drop sound effect. But it's very similar here, as you will hear. Really, really cool on the sound system here. But you can see the definite derivative nature. This game started out and uh, moved on to a game such as Robotron. Then eventually was utilized in a game such as Smash TV. And many, many more games throughout history. But I'm absolutely digging this bass drop style sound effect on here. And 
we'll play the other game that's very, very similar to this. So yes, we have Space Dungeon, which became essentially Robotron 2084, and then Smash TV. I mean, there's no many notable examples in this type of subgenre of twin stick shmup shooters. Another game similar to this is Total Carnage, which I'm digging because it's like Smash TV crossed over with Akari Warriors, where you actually do the levels and move on, th traverse levels, just like you would in Akari Warriors. And I like the game called Rambo 3, which was on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. I mean, I love any of these overhead style levels, and I played Akari Warriors many, many times over the years. And of course, Bubble Bobble. I guess Bubble Bobble would kind of constitute the action shmup shooter game as well, because you're using bubbles to take out the enemies, and then bumping them off the screen. But Total Carnage is a fantastic game, also similar to Smash TV, and Robotron, and Berserk, and many, many other games of that score nature. And there is one specific example of this genre that I like the best, and I'll show you it as the last game in this video. Here we're getting our typical BIOS load in here. Anytime you plug in the machine, you always get the, basically the ROM checksums. So it's like Smash TV, but has a little bit of an Akari Warriors feel to it. And one thing I really, really love here, just watch what happens when I hit the landmine. Just like in TMNT, Turtles in Time. I absolutely love the 3D coming out of the screen effect. But really, really cool game. And this game is also on the Super Nintendo. Definitely worth your time checking out. Great two-player game to boot. So very similar to Smash TV, made by the same company. And I do have several Midway collections of which Smash TV is part of. We'll load another game that's a little bit like this for the arcade, which is also on Super Nintendo. This one is called Mertz. In the Super Nintendo and arcade versions, they're actually a little bit different, so check out both versions. There are quite a few games where you play the arcade version and then the home version, and they're vastly different, such as Bionic Commando, Shinobi Shadow Dancer, stuff like that. And I'm not talking Shinobi Shinobi, I'm talking the Shinobi series Shadow Dancer game. The arcade version as well as the Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis versions are quite different. And of course Moonwalker, Michael Jackson are very different for the arcade and Mega Drive versions. But here we are now playing the Mercs arcade version, which is a little bit different than the home Super Nintendo version. So again, I'll come back to more shmups in the future. I'm just not going to do a whole video devoted to them because I do not want to run in to doing the same games over again. Another great arcade game that never ever got old for me. And I think the difference between the home version and the arcade version is that there are a few additional stages in the home version. Kind of like when you play TMNT, the arcade game for Nintendo, you have the additional stages, such as the snow stage. But great, great run and gun shmup game. But there's another one that I think is the best example of this style of game. And it is on the Neo Geo. It is called Shock Troopers. That is by far my favorite of this genre, the subgenre of run and gun shmup shooter games. Full load Neo Geo Shadow Shock Troopers, sorry. And I have literally every Neo Geo collection you can name, and I'm very happy to have this in those collections. I have this on my PS3 as well as in the PSP collection and the Wii collection. And of course this will be in the mini Neo Geo collection that's coming out on the little 
mini cabinet that, you know, that's cool. You can connect it to the TV, and it is in the shape of a mini arcade cabinet as well. I'm not sure when that's coming out and or what the price point's going to be. But here we're running Shock Troopers on May 2003. And I'm additionally running Unibiles with it. Perfect end to a perfect shmup arcade series. So we should get the Neo Geo Bio Splash screen right now. There we got the Unibiles, good to go. And I can do the MAME options and do cheats if I have the Cheat Age mod installed. And I can enable cheats this way. But I can also get into the game. And I can hold down three buttons, which I believe are A, B, and C right now. You can try out different combinations of the face buttons. But on my Wii controller, I'm holding down B, X, and Y. And push and start, and I get Unibiles. I'm going into the cheat database. I can do Infinity Gun Ammo. Or Infinity, I'll do Infinity Time. Resume the game, not reset it, resume it. And I should have Infinity Time using the Unibio Tip Switch Cheats. But in the Akari Warriors Legacy, this is definitely my favorite genre, subgenre of the Run and Gun Shmup. Incredible game. And I apparently have Infinity Time on the screen right now. And there will be a separate video on how to set up the Neo Geo, Neo Geo Unibiles for use with MAME 2003, which I am running this on right now. But hope you enjoyed the Shmup Stravaganza series. This is part 10 and the final part in the series. Now I'm going to be moving on to the Race Stravaganza series with a bunch of racing games. So hope you enjoyed the series.